So I played five games with a completely different deck and everything was good to go. And when I went to edit the video, I saw that I was muted and the game is muted. And so I got really tilted. I deleted the whole thing and here we are tilted playing in Slave 6 Nilfgaard. Now, the whole idea of this deck is messing with your opponent's win conditions, whether it's stealing them, copying them, and just really invading their privacy, right? And a lot of you guys don't like that. I see it all over YouTube and Reddit. And if you really don't like people messing with your stuff, you're going to love the sponsor of today's video, Surfshark. When the weekend finally comes around that it's time to hop on the PC and unwind, the last thing you want to worry about is cybersecurity. That's why I trust Surfshark VPN to take care of everything for me. Surfshark protects my online privacy and personal data and alerts me of any breaches, so events like when someone hacked my Gwen account back in 2022 can be prevented from ever happening again. I also use Surfshark to play on the same servers as my friends overseas when gaming, so neither of us have to deal with ridiculous ping. Also, what is the deal with the US getting all the best exclusive content on streaming apps? In only a few clicks, I can travel there to catch up on what I've been missing, and I'm sure many of you can relate to this. Purchasing a 24-month VPN plan is seriously one of the best options you could find now. Not only does Surfshark have an incredible offer, but for three months extra, just scan the QR code on the screen or click the link in the description and use my promo code QSENO. Just try it out for yourself, and if you find a better VPN solution for all your devices with 24-7 support, by the way, it has a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Thanks again to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Let's get right back into the list here, and I'll explain how to play the deck. So we have Enslaved 6, meaning we can steal something from the opponent or seize it up to 6 power because we have enough tactic cards in the deck to make that work, being 12. Now, what the typical round will look like is generally we're going to be having Yan Calviet in hand, okay? So we're going to be able to sort our deck from the highest provision cost to the lowest provision cost. If we're able to get Torres in hand in round 1, I like to play this card first. So on deploy, give three units spying with a provision cost of 10 or less from your opponent's deck, then spawn base copies of them in our deck. Then boost self by one for each provision below the limit. So if we go for a bunch of bronze cards, we're going to get a huge boost with Torres. If we go for a bunch of gold cards, it's not going to be as much of a boost, but we're going to have really good carryover options for later. So you can use your discretion. Are we looking for reach in the round, or are we looking for, you know, just getting good carryover, right? It really depends on the situation and honestly what you end up pulling. Maybe they have all their good cards in hand, so you're limited to their bronze ones in the deck. Either way, it's fine. If we don't draw this organically, we can play Calvite, and then we can go and take something like the Magni Division, which allows us to play a tactic from our hand, then draw a card. And because we sorted the deck, we know this is going to be our most expensive card, so we can get it, right? It's pretty much guaranteed in round one. I would say there's very few instances where you wouldn't pull this off it would just be you missing these and this i guess which would be the deciding factor but unlikely okay so we have that sort of play and what's nice about giving things spying is we're automatically setting up terra nova so we don't have to worry about the seas to get it we don't have to worry about running a double mage torturer just to get it right it's pretty much well equipped from the get-go now terra nova is a card that you could play late in the round depending on what you're playing but it's probably best to play early so it has assimilate you want to maximize the amount of assimilate value we're getting because late game we have a lot of payoffs okay so the coup is going to be a payoff. Stefan Skellen, every time we play a tactic, is going to be a payoff. We have Vigo, we have Bribery, we have Nausicaa Sergeant, we have the Diplos. There's a lot of stuff that really helps boost up Terra Nova in value. And if we can pull Terra Nova into an engine, all the better. Sometimes we don't get so lucky. Sometimes we just get Terra Nova for a big point slam, which is fine. We could play them a little later so that you know nothing gets punished, whatever the case. Again, another situational thing. This deck does require a little bit of thinking as to when you're going to be playing the Terra Nova. But uh, regardless, a strong card in a long or short round. Okay, so we have that there. Stefan Skellen with the rework a few patches ago is just lethal. So play an ace of ace up the sleeve for each three tactics in your starting deck so we have 12 we're getting four ace up the sleeves and they're two damage each and it's a spawn card so everything with assimilate is going to be getting the payoff as i mentioned terra nova being one of them vigo being one of them and mage torturer you want to get down these assimilate cards preferably before you go take stefan unless your opponent plays an absolute answer this or lose type situation like in early game 
then you're sort of forced to go and do that because we don't have a lot of tall punish and being able to take down an eight is uh, very flexible, right? Or being able to take something down high enough so that we could take it with leader is another situation, right? Maybe we don't have Vilgeforts at the time. This could be our only option. So think about it that way. Ku is really good. I wouldn't play Ku if I didn't have Torres. It just, it would be too risky, you know, because we only have the leader and then the Mage Torture to give spying beyond the Torres. So, yeah, I probably wouldn't take Ku in that case, like, otherwise. But uh, Ku feels really good here. The amount of potential we can get. Let's say we're pulling into Fakusha or, you know, just something crazy, right? Something that will also create other cards. One of the best Ku targets you could probably find would be in a mirror match. You just pretty much take anything that they're giving us. But a lot of people play Rune Mage. Rune Mage is a perfect target to set up the coup for, right? Imagine getting, like, multiple Rune Mages. It's, like, unlimited procs for Assimilate. So, you know, tend to go for cards that create cards when you're giving Spying in coup if you can. All right? We talked about this here. Vilgefort, it's pretty simple. It's a, a very highly played card, so you have bound to be seeing this one no matter what rank you're at. Now, destroy an enemy unit. Then the opponent summons top unit from their deck to a random enemy row. We're nine times out of ten going to be using it on melee. So be careful when you're using it because you don't want to play it on range and kill one of our own units, right? That's not really the idea with this deck. Now, again, just a good, effective tall punish. If you don't want Vilgeforts, if you're just like so anti Vilgeforts, you could play Yennefer's Invocation. Plays a little bit more into the Simulate when you do something like that, but. It's not a requirement. I just think Vilgefort is nice because he also have a body as well. But sometimes he will play for negative points if your opponent has something really tall in deck, right? But it's rare. It's rare for sure. Now, Anna Henrietta, replace your leader ability with the base copy of your opponent's leader ability. Because we don't want to get pushed super hard early game, we want to make sure we get to the round with all our good cards in hand. She could be good, right? Because now we could use leader whenever we want to use leader, but we get something for later. And another good part about this here is that when we're copying their strategy with a lot of our create and play type stuff, right? You know, we want to make sure that we have a leader that will actually synergize with that. So, for example, we're making a bunch of Northern Realms engines. We could use Inspired Zeal or Stockpile, right? There's a lot of different stuff, you know, Pins and Maneuver. If we're playing against Skellige, you know, Patricidal Fury is just really good, right? Tons of good applications for the card, and it's often playing at or above her provisions so that's good now vigo is one of the cards that you could do pretty much whatever you want to do with now we could take vigo into nausicaa which is fine that's a couple of simulate procs in one turn right it gets this to four so they can't coup it in the mirror match or we can go and take spying if we need to give some spying we can go and take the magni if we need to thin out a little bit more i don't have a lot of bronze cards so the vigo pulls are actually very good right one two three and four so we're going to be getting three options to choose from, from the four that we have. And if you don't need Peller, just hope that you don't pull Peller. It's not that bad, right? So we have that. Bribery is the high roll of the century type card. It, it's annoying, but I still play it because it's that strong. You kind of have to play it if you're playing something like this. Now create and play a unit from your opponent's starting deck. Again, plays right back into the synergy from everything we've discussed before. It just makes sense. We could really get something good. Again, you want to make sure you're getting Assimilate cards out on the board first because if you low roll the bribery, you kind of make some of the points back in Assimilate procs. If you low roll on an empty board, then you're kind of just playing a five point unit for eight provisions, which feels terrible. So there's that. Nazca Sergeant doubled up on two because what we could do is essentially win round one, pass round two, long round three. And then we get just tons of stuff here, right? Or we could even bleed and just go short round three, get our card back, and just, you know, slam, slam, slam. So I like the two of these here. They're just really good. In previous versions, I would have played cards like Lydia, but Lydia at 9p, whereas this is at 6, it just, come on, you know, it's a lot of points. And then I have some nice control here, get rid of something at 6 power on an empty board, or, you know, if they start playing stuff beside it, we still have 4 points of reach. It's pretty good. couple jousts here to help with that as well. We could take them defensively because we do get a shield if we play it on ourselves. There are very few times where I want to take them defensively, but it is something proactive to do. If the opponent's playing non-unit in round 1 and we have a lamp down, we could just give it a shield or something like that. Or just give Calvita a shield, right? It, uh, it just makes things a little bit easier to play into. 
in awkward situations. Battle preps make a lot of sense here. I think that they're just a good value card to play in around the Magnes. When we're taking a thin, we like this play. We get the armor, it's defensive. We get the thin, it's you know good. We get the six for four, it's fine. We can also put these on Nausicaa's later, you know they work out pretty well if i don't play these in round one i tend to not want to play them later so it's one of those things where you don't need to once you sort the deck with calvi you'll never see them again so don't worry too much about it obsidian mirror is sort of a high roll card you don't have to use it but i think it's nice to have it sort of completes the round of tactics that we need in order to make the leader work and to be able to spawn one power copies of three enemy bronze units on the opposite row is huge if we're playing against harmony that's three engines that we're getting plus whatever else we're playing into that you know you could see how that would make a difference so it's one of those things where it just it rolls nicely if you're playing against dwarves we love this because we can make a bunch of berserkers and battle prep them you know just some cool things to think about while you're playing the deck boo hurt it's one of those things defensive it's uh you know six points we get but we could start just like hiking up what we're going to be taking out anyways so if we see a good opportunity to vilg but we have some time we could take a boo hurt boost something on our side boost that up we get the points right back so then we're just basically netting nine off this feels pretty good right and then purified just because you know there might be something that we create and play that we need to have looking good or even our assimilate engines we don't want them to die right they get locked poisoned whatever they do when they get tall you know so we have the peller also a way around the defender because my punish is limited we don't want to waste on defender and then not have anything left for what's behind the defender so taking defender is not always an option at seven power and slave six takes some effort so peller is just really good for that so that's the deck. We hit level 300 in the Yen journey, and uh, I got four games with live commentary for reference for you guys today. Hopefully you enjoy, and uh, I'm going to try to re-record that video that I messed up the other day, and, you know, try to get that one out as soon as possible, hopefully tomorrow, okay? Let's get into the gameplay. See you guys soon. Thank you. Okay, so we got Kelly coming up here first, I'm guessing, whenever I see the leader quick to jump to conclusions right let's have a look and again we go first right as always i think in these types of matchups i'm always cursed with the coin i don't want to go first but here we are so i don't know how valuable the jousts are going to be here just because i don't know if i'm gonna be able to get to what we need to get if they can boost it with a leader charge so it might just be going for points instead for us now if i take calvit and then i go into the magnes i should be decent so we'll try that i, this I just want to make sure that i actually get torres early So it's not, it's not what it looks like. Okay. Should I just take Madoc? Yeah. You know, it's going to be a long game if we don't take him. There we go. If I put down Torres and then we we take Magic a Lamp, it's around 20 points. It really depends on what they got going on, if they can catch up in a few cards. Kelly, okay. Yeah, we don't have an answer to that. I could just click Maddox, though, for real. What a trash. I guess... Double scouting it. Sure. This is not doing anything for me. 
neither, like, none of these cards are really doing anything for me. I'm glad they're low P. We can always push back Kelly, but chances are that they're going to pull into one themselves, so. Yeah, of course. Of course, of course. I could roll a Drowner. Imagine. Two, four, six, eight, Stefan takes it down. We pretty much guarantee they have Sabbath, though. I think it's just worth going for it. Cool card with Kelly. The problem is it's a unit with Kelly, you know? All right, that's it. I'm out. Let's go. <laughs> I was like, there's no way you're making up the points. But I guess last leader, fair enough. They didn't play a defender yet. Maybe it's like remove push. We know it's in their deck, but we don't know where in their deck. Or push then remove. Actually, that's better. Push the defender. They'll just move it back though. I don't know. It's tough. But I got two movements. So it would be actually pretty nice to get Mage Torture, I think. I don't think I'm going to take both of these, so... There we go. I didn't even get a good uh, Terra Nova yet. Maybe it's a matter of just taking Vigo. And we just take like a sergeant, get at least one assimilate engine on the board, and then look for a spy. Then we play this, you know, try to play it out that way. gotta watch out for uh, Red Haze just not give them too much to work with here's not half bad because the armor but Parasite okay I'm missing a lot of assimilate procs because they're playing non-interactive Start 
I either play Maddox or a scout. <laughs> Come on, man. I think I'm going to stay patient just a little bit longer. Look, I have to. Uh, let's kill... Let's just play the whole damage game here. Kill that, and we can even just boost it up. Because it's on barricade, right? So if we remove that engine, we're getting the points, but we're also getting the residuals here. And they've played how many bombs? Yeah, only a few. They have quite a few left, I'm sure. move a unit to the other row here we missed another assimilate proc i don't have a lot left here you know what i'm gonna play terra nova Sad. 9.2 Nova. Would have been 10, 11, 12. I mean, if we just did that at the beginning, but you have to hold out for something better. We didn't know that they're just going to play no units the entire game. Or Dancing Star. Right there. <sighs> Draw a Dragon. I guess Kelly on Range Row is the, it's the play, unless they... Unless they move it. Which would be funny. It'd actually be terrifying, but funny. I mean, at that point, I would just kill it. There we go. I knew something good was going to happen. Okay, so it plays for seven now. It's a counter two. I think we're okay with that. No, now it's on two of them. I mean, we could just manipulate that with our leader. Or just kill it. Whatever. Yeah, it's not even close. So we got a mirror match coming up here next. Torres feels so important in round one. Hopefully we can draw organically here. Maybe one of these goes back. Come on. I don't think we're going to find an engine at 4p. So. Jeez, man. We have to top deck first. The problem is, if they decide to take a Vilk here, we're in real big trouble. So, we got to be quick with it. I feel like if we don't get Taurus, we just lose. Yeah, of course they have Fire Scorpions right after I'm just like, oh, there's no way. I guess that's fine. Most people aren't playing those anymore. My I trust you have Jeez, eh? Good rolls. Oh, 
<laughs> I guess we take Helga, we take that, and then they have slave drivers in there. So instead of taking, well, they have Magnes as well. I wonder what they're cutting and they're doing that way. We like, we like the drivers though. They're pretty good here. The big shot is, do I go and... Just pass? Nah, we're not really up by that much. Let's get rid of a few things here. I think we're just going to dump... Joust is going to be very good. Just do that. I just don't know if we're even going to get Joust. We'll get this at least. And then... I just don't want them to coup that. Maybe that's the plan. Do I enjoy nope. We gotta purify that ASAP. I don't want them to play it right now. It's crazy. That would be absurd. So we actually top deck into everything good, but they don't. So it's a question of whether or not we should try and bleed, right? Because they could just naturally pull well, but let's, uh, let's figure it out here. Get that. My next is going to be Vigo. What? Oh, because that was shuffled in. That's right. If we take that, damage by two bleeding, it's kind of slow. Don't want to just blow leader just yet, you know. Suffering a noble friend will be a count once I'm done with you. I could take it, or I could use one and coup it, which is decent. Spill blood to make you suffer like never before. <laughs> They're searching for cards. I'm surprised Calvi's not out yet. Yeah, that's a nice little swing there. 
doesn't get them ahead. Um, I think what I'm supposed to do is take that one now. Impertinence is the one thing I cannot abide. Stefan here would be pretty annoying, like a leader Stefan. If I take this out, then I get the Helga back from them, and then we actually get, uh, we can, like, take it. Oh, it's the, jeez, I thought it was going to be the Helga, because they, they played this combo, that's right. You know, I'm not opposed to that, because we actually take away a lot of points for them in round 3 anyways. And the fact that we made another Nausicaa, it's actually good too, you know? Uh, it's starting to look like they didn't go Calvite. Speak your mind, to the point. Do they take it? Yeah. That's no problem. Take it back. Take it right back. Gotcha, gotcha, Do another one. <laughs> Bro, it's like literally the fight over the Helgas in this game. I've seen so many of these go around. I don't think I've seen so many of them go around in my life. Okay. Huh. I think that's the only way, because then if they Stefan, it's not as good. Oh, there's the other one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is wild. Listen, um, that's my pass. And my top deck's looking proper. Remember that we actually milled out one of their Nazgas too, so it's uh, a bit of an advantage there. And the fact that they have War Council means maybe they don't have some of the other nice gold cards that we have. I'm pretty sure I win. The Anna Henrietta spam was actually very crazy. That was like a really good line for them. It's 
that's gonna be that's gonna be decent. We got one, two. Coup's a little sketch, but I think we can make it work. Keeps that out of coup range, which is great. I just don't want coup to come down for three. We gave spine to quite a few things, but we milled out one of them. They played Helga. The third one was uh, the driver. So if they play the driver, we can coup that. Would have been a nice mulligan, actually, if you think about it. I'm trying to see if maybe they have a coup. Play this late so they can't coup it. I guess it's just enough. You see, they forfeit. Wow, okay. We have Stockpile coming up here next. I'm excited. It's actually been a while. Maybe I'm due to play st like Stockpile soon. I'm inspired, man. It's been a couple patches since I played it. I don't know how much it would change, but still. We'll put these back because it's round one. We want to be able to get rid of some engines, right? Don't think we're going to be needing the boo herd as much. Yeah, so we're going to have to drop Calvite first because I need my Torres. Torres opener is like a game changer for this deck, I find. So we can hit that for five right away and stop it. We'll do that now. Use Magni. I would imagine that they're going to want to put down another siege engine here so that they can capitalize on the master. Yeah, see. There's not much I can do about this though. So we'll just play. Lock is good. Cherry is good. Uh honestly, man. Pride's good. Then we can coup them later. Now it's all about drawing them, right? To the dungeon way. Let's get rid of a few things here in around the provisions. It sucks because I like all my cards. Uh, okay, fine. Let's put that, that, and that. And uh, I don't think we take Radovid. But Radovid into Terra Nova into Foltest Pride is actually very good. We just get Anna out here and then we're chilling, right? We'll go for the thin. Forty to six, definitely looks like an overspend for me, doesn't it? I think they think I'm dumb. I think they play one more. Yeah. 
Oh, we don't. <laughs> no, we don't. We're getting out, man. Now, keep in mind, they could probably catch up in two. But you never know. Well, what are they going to do in two? That's a lot of points still. And they played Amphibious. I don't know. They might have to use quite a few leader charges. Here, let's get out. That blue coin temple pass special, man. It's modern Gwent, though. I wouldn't be surprised if they just get like 30 points here. 18, 36. They're closing the gap. Yeah, you see? Sucks that you don't even get the order on that third one. So they have to use the second leader charge. That was actually very close. We go into a long round three. It's kind of what I like to see. We have good removal options for what's coming off their scenario. And then we could set up our own full test pride. I think that's okay. It's not bad. We could play Anna on the dry pass too, which is nice. What are my next pulls? We don't know for sure, right? It's probably going to be these first. Hopefully these are shuffled in where they need to be. If not, we can have this for one more pull, which is nice. Uh, honestly, man, put back a Joust for now. That's good. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta start funneling through these cards. We need to get the big ones. Speak your mind to the point. And the hand is just too good, so we keep. There's my lock. Okay, so do we need Mage Torture when we have so many good options? Probably not. It's a good assimilate proc though, but they have boiling oils all over the place. These are the ones that we want. Ah, uh, I'm I'm really just risking it all here. I don't know if it's worth it anymore. I could always just coup theirs. Still. For the content, right? Do we roll it again? Yeah, for the content. Okay. Terra Nova into... Well, actually, Terra Nova gets one regardless, so... Either way, I think we're chilling. But Terra Nova's probably just good for Radovid, because it's a good opening place. We can get as many Simulate procs as we can, right? So maybe that's the move. You know? Because, look, everything I'm going to be playing here is payoff. Like this, this, this. And, in fact, maybe we even take Vigo for a Magni. It would make sense here because we get rid of the engine on the range row. It's a lot of turns, you know? If we pull it, of course. We don't pull it, so... Regardless, I think that's pretty good. What's more of a threat? Battering Ram or a simple trebuchet? The one man crew is kind of scary. Do we just lock? Mm. It's a tough, tough world. Here. Let's just dome that so then they don't have a lot of siege engines here. And then we can start doing things. We have a lock, you know? Yeah, we're good. Lock respond. Kill respond. Kill respond. Then payoffs at the end. 
Or unless we have to use these early to keep these alive, I'm fine with that as well. Jeez. Holy. <sighs> it would have been nice to play Radovid here so that we get the pocket already. Because I don't have the... Because now it comes down to basically me doing this for nothing. Because it was my bad. You know, it's like a whoops. And we gotta, we gotta make the pocket here. So there's that. At least it's not horrible though. Like, it's doable. We'll do this here now. Uh, we probably just go for one more. So next turn we get it. I don't know. I feel like that's enough just to prevent them from winning. Just a little mistake, though. For nitpicking, you got to put this on melee, sandwich it like that, so we're saving leader charges. I would have been able to kill this here as well, just so you know. That would have been dead if we would have done this properly. So if it costs us the game, then, you know, so be it. But I don't think it will. What can I do? Yeah, it's a good luck. Okay, so... This has to die... And this has to die. I just don't know if it's worth doing just yet. It could just be a proc. No shot. I don't deserve this. <laughs> oh, man. This guy's mad. I'm mad too. I'm actually mad for you, man. I don't deserve this. Like, now I understand why people play bribery. As long as we don't crowd the melee row too much, we're fine. We're just gonna play Vilg at some point. Okay. You know, that's a soldier too. We can lock this one. I hope we can trust and then we'll just play, I think, Nausicaa here. So that seems to be the biggest threat, okay. So what we'll do is kill it now. It's just I want the crew, so uh, I don't I don't think it matters that much. Cooldown four if I use it though. Maybe we just don't use it yet. I'm stressing over the Radovid mistake still, but like, look at the reality though. It's not that bad. They might have a heat wave somewhere. I just think that they really doubled down on, on the siege stuff. Yeah, so they concede. But like, realistically, Nausicaa We'd go here, we'd kill that, cooldown to use this on the tallest thing, and then we're just good, right? So, not stressing too much on that one. Alright, we got Inspired Zeal coming up here next. Uh, 
a lot of blue coins, if I have to say. I really prefer playing something like this on red. It's a very responsive deck. So, you know, it's kind of annoying, but we do the best that we can here. So, can't really choose the coin. Let's put back Peller for now. We got Taurus in round one, thankfully. And then we got this to top deck into what's good. Coup early, I don't mind. The hand looks like a round three hand, which is a problem here. So we're going to start putting some stuff back. Um, let's put back that. Let's put back that. We'll get him back later. Radovid, nice. Uh, <laughs> Reaver's Scout is going to be like literally so turned. If I make copies of the Nausicaas, we just win the game, I think. What are they playing? What was the... Is it just Reavers? That's a slow round one. If they're going to start off with Muta Generator, then maybe we look for a Tempo Pass. Let's see. They're just going to use Inspired Zeal on them, so I don't really know how effective a Joust is going to be. Let's put back this. This could be very good. Maybe just Peller. Maybe just that as well. Onwards, sons of Nirvgod. That's a problem. Momentum, a function of mass and Do I ever just take that? I can just take that and reset leader. Nope. Well, we could just kill it. They might use a uh, a winch or something on it too, so something to think about. Maybe we just kill this. Because if they winch it, then it's just a better Vilg. Why are they sweating so hard? Two leader charges in one round. It's not really going the way that I thought it was going to go. I thought they were going to save them for the scouts. Um, honestly, I'm just going to take this out. And then uh, maybe just look for a pass. So they're doing like a 10-5 so far. Well, that's a... That's a... F wow. I forgot it wasn't a 4. Okay, I, that's enough for me. I think I'm just going to get out of here. I don't like it. We need some payoff cards instead of some carryover plays. Because they're down by 16 and they need two, so. There you go. See, that's what I'm talking about. We gotta get, we gotta get those out early. Like, those are kind of a big deal. It's just, where are the soldiers? I would have much rather put a soldier instead of this. You don't say. That's not enough unless they use the last leader. No way. Uh, you love to see it. I think that was great. All three leader charges just for this carryover. If it's like a uh, Erlen play, then I can understand why. Hey. 
Hand looks good. Maybe this goes back. That's a bit better. Hand's too good. That's ah, fine. I'll just play coup. It's like cards I don't want to see again, you know? Like the battle prep. This couldn't have gone better. Spawn and play. Massive. Then we could use that to make it work for real. So we gave spying to these ones. Two of those. And then what was the third thing? It was this. I think it's actually just going to be Terranova into one of the scouts. With no boost. They have siege, okay, that's a problem. If I go into this here, we make that copy on the same turn, which is massive. We just get that here, which is just amazing. Try to soak up some of that damage. Maybe we could have put both of them on the range row. I don't know. It's a lot of points, a lot of tempo. I'm not too worried. Yet. They're going to have some crazy engines, right? The siege engines they play for scenario are going to be friggin' like 10 points. Yeah, look. I'm an officer, I'm a gentleman. Like, not a lot you could do about that, you know? I can kill these two. What do you need me to do? And then we just let one stick. It's not great, but it's something. Try and keep soldiers on the range row so that if I do take a full test pride, for example, I don't think we're going to be getting one, but it's an if. It's just now they're really hard to get rid of. That's ambitious. That would have been a really, really good payoff had we actually spent the the leader first. It's just the problem is finding the damn leader. It's like, where are we going to find it? I don't want to take a Siege Master, even if it had the order. It's just not very good here, you know? That's not a... That works. They're sort of slowing down the flow. I do have a couple things I can do, though. I could play another sergeant, and then we have to start thinking about leader. I just need another engine to take, or to look at. I might just have to take this for six, mitigate some of the damage here. Yeah, like, it's getting kind of crazy. Be 
I need to be able to actually play this card, play this card, you know? There we go. Finally something we can coup. I was kind of worried about it, but now we're just chilling, right? Here. We do it again. We do it again. I'd say we have just a lot of points left. If they have Tall Punish, that's one thing. They could be setting up like an Igni or something like that, so gotta be careful. Ah, okay. So here is where the points come out. Gotcha. That isn't the first one they played, though. That's the second one they played. So we're gonna use this to make sure that we're actually getting it. I'm actually more worried about these than I was scenario. Yeah, if they keep doing that. The fact that keeps them in reach like this is nuts. At least we get that assimilate times like a million here, look. Scorch. Scorch hits for 34. They wouldn't, though. Like, if they had Scorch in this deck, I'd probably quit. Because they're going so tall with the Muta Generator, it just wouldn't make sense. So we don't have to worry too much. We played around Igni, at least, with the Rose. Yeah, I don't know, man. If it's just one more of those, it's going to be crazy. Okay, yeah. <laughs> We're just good. The Nazca spam works. <laughs> 